Hello friends, a very warm welcome to Coding Techniques again. So like I already said in the previous video that we will start a series on Overage application. So before getting started with the UI design, I thought let's work with the Firebase also to set up our authentication. So in this lecture, we are going to see how to set up Firebase for our Ionic project. So let's get started with that. All right, so let's get started with our food delivery application auth screens, which we have already built long back. So I'm going to take that code in our project as this is a new project which I've created. So I've copied all the code, which you can get it from the GitHub. So the source code is already available for that particular project in that particular video description. You can check the description of this video to get to that particular video. All right. So out here you can see no output is showing up. And why is that so? Because we used storage plugin of capacitor version two in our previous project. So as you already know, as of now, capacitor version three is launched. So we have to upgrade our system to capacitor version three plugin for the storage to make that work. And for doing that up, let's go to capacitorjs.com slash docs. This is the URL. And in here, let's go to the plugin section. Let's go to the official plugins. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see a storage plugin. So out here, we just need to install this up. So let me just copy it up and let's open another PowerShell. I will paste it out here. All right, so now this is installed, but if you see out here, we won't be having any www folder or we do have actually, that's fine. If you do not have this www folder, then you simply hit this command ionic build. All right. And hit enter. Once that is done, I will not run that up because it is already present out here. Or let me do that up because you might face some problem. So I will show you up if I still run this up. I won't face any problem. We can run the same command again and again. Not a problem. So basically it will create a www folder which will copy all our code in the JS files. As you can see out here, all the files are in JS. All right. So converting into JavaScript files. That's what it does. And if you don't do that and you try to run the next command, which is npx cap sync, it's going to give you some errors. I think I have already shown this up in the previous videos anyways, but if you still don't know about it, you can go through it. All right. So once this is done, we will simply run the command npx cap sync. So it will sync our package or the plugin. What is wrong out here? Oops, I made a mistake. It should be npx cap sync, not npz. By mistake, I have done that. So yeah, it's going to sync our plugin in this particular manner. All right. Now, once that is done, what is the next step that we need to do? Well, we need to import our storage and I'll copy this import. And instead of this too, we don't need that. I'll simply paste it. All right. And in here, everything is fine. In fact, we can pass a wait out here and a sync too, if needed. You can pass it directly also without doing that. That will return a promise. But if you want an async await thing to be done, you can do that up. All right. That's completely up to you how you want it to be done. And now you can see our design is showing up. And if I click on skip, well, it is redirecting me to this particular page, which is our off screens page. All right. So in here, we can check the sign in and sign up properly. It's working, right? Now, once this is done, it is properly working. Let's set up our Firebase for this particular project. So in order to do that up, I will open the browser and out here I'm going to type firebase.google.com. So in here, I'm already logged into the, to my account, Google account. If you are not logged in, you just simply log in with your Google account and it's going to lead you to this particular dashboard. All right. Now out here, just go to the console. So out here, I already have a lot many projects. I'll create another one. Let me name it Uber it and let's hit continue. All right. Enable. Let's hit continue again. Select an account default account for Firebase. That's great. Create the project. All right. So our project is created. Now we'll hit on continue. Now in here, you can see we are redirected to the Uber Eats project and out here in order to work with the Firebase in our Ionic project, we have to work with the web. So I'll click on the web one and out here I need to pass a name. So let me just pass 
mother it's because that's the name i have given to that particular application and if you want to host it in the firebase servo then you can use this firebase hosting i don't want to use that up so i'll skip that and hit on register app all right so once that is done it is asking to install the firebase but let me skip that part at, as of now and this is the configuration that you new, need to look into this is what you need to set up so i'll simply copy this up and after that i will click on continue to console so as firebase is free for certain amount of requests so we can simply use that up in our application very easily so out here everything is set up now all right so i have reloaded this page again because it was not showing up earlier so now it is showing up out here and if i click on it if i go to the settings i can see all the details out here all right you can even work with the cloud messaging out here and a whole lot of stuff is available out here now i need to implement the authentication that is what we need out here all right you can work with the fire store database also real-time database and storage anything you want to do you can do that up but as of now i'll simply show you how to work with the authentication part so i'll just click on the authentication and let's click on get started so as of now we will work with the email and password authentication of firebase so i'll click on that and i'll enable it up password as passwordless signing we don't want that so i'll simply hit save and continue all right so it is enabled now and we can simply work with that so now the next thing is to go to our project so i'm out here and let's go to our environment file and out here after the production i'm simply gonna paste the whole code and remove this constant not needed so this is our firebase config which we need all right and we have to remove this equal it's gonna be a colon and semicolon is not needed fine so this is the configuration that we need to put up in our environment and in fact you can put the same in the environment for production because in the production mode you will have to use the configuration out here also and this is the this is not the testing one this is the real one all right so remember that up now once that is done so now after doing that up let me just close this too all right so now what i'll do is i will run a command let me just close this so that you can see that up so i'll simply install firebase tools globally into my project all right so it's going to basically install the firebase cli which we need so let's work with that now so i'll hit enter now once that is done i will run another command called firebase login to log into our firebase account all right so i'm getting an error out here now in order to fix that error i'll go to this particular location now in this location i'll simply remove this firebase.ps1 file all right because that's a powershell thing that error comes up now if i try to run this command again let's see what happens so now you can see this command is running and it is showing that i'm already logged into the account so now i can simply run another command firebase in it and these are all the steps to set up firebase in your project so that you can work with it very nicely all right so i'll simply hit yes and proceed with that and now why i'm using that up say like you want some rules functions to be used in your application you can directly do that up from here itself from the project itself all right so like out here you have real-time database firestore so we can click on that firestore you might be working with that if you want to then functions you might be looking for functions to work with hosting i don't need it up then storage you might work with the storage also all right if you want to work with the firebase emulators you can simply click that up and it will install all the dependencies into your particular project of fionic in this particular project only actually all right so i've already selected all the things i don't think i've missed anything i think it's done so i'll hit just enter and that's gonna work now it is asking me to select an existing project yes i will select an existing project and the project name is uber it's this one for me might be different in your case so it is giving me an error because i am not using cloud firestore in this project as of now so if you use it up then you will see all the functions and other stuff showing it out here that is why i just wanted to show you these things and i've already explained these things pretty nicely in my complete course on ionic with firebase where we are building the food delivery application similar to uber eats 
Zomato or Swiggy, you might have heard of it, all right? So if you want to build it completely, you can just refer to my course and you will get to learn a lot many stuff from beginner to advanced level, all right? So coming back to this video, so we are done with the setup. And if you still want to use this Firebase Firestore and Stories, then what I'll, I'll show you that also, you don't have to worry. You simply go out here to the Firebase da Firestore database. And in here, if you click create database, well, that's going to work. Now, you have two different modes, whether you want to start in test mode. So if you click on test mode, you will get this kind of permissions in your Firebase rules. But let me click on production only because I don't want to change this as of now. So it's completely up to you which thing you want to use because there is a timestamp to use it up up to I think 4th of January maybe. Yeah, for the next 30 days you can use that up. So I just want to go for production because we will be launching a lot many stuffs uh, in the UI part also. Maybe if needed then I will show up few more things out here. So let's go for production mode only as of now. You can change this up later on also if you select the test mode. But yeah. All right, so I'll go for production mode and fine. After you set this location, you cannot change it later. All right, if you want to change your storage location, you can simply check out here. All right, let me select. Uh, okay, which one should I select? Asian Northeast, maybe because I'm in Asia. So let me select this part. I'm not very much sure about it, but let's go for it. Not a problem. That's the closest server that will help you to fetch the data. By default, you can use the US Central also as you need. You can change it later on maybe in some other project if you want to do that up. Basically, your location is what it is trying to detect, all right? So that they can help you to reach the closest server pretty easily and get the data pretty fast. So meanwhile, our Firestore database is properly set. Now I have also selected the storage. So let's click on that and you can in fact use it up to upload your files basically the photos or the videos if you want have any all right so let me skip that part for the time being maybe not needed or it has already been started maybe anyways let's jump back to our project and let's try to run this command again firebase in it let's see what happens this time yes move ahead select this time again same firestore functions well functions basically helps you to use your project and the firebase thing out here for, as a backend so you don't need any other backend to use if you're using this stuff all right so these three things i'm going to use storage firestore and functions hit enter existing project so selected the project i think now it's not going to give me any error and in fact you can change the firebase rules and so out here it is asking me for the name let me give it first so firestore dot rules you can change the name as per your requirement so that file will be created out here and you can change the rules directly from here you don't have to go to the firebase account to do that up all right firebase dot indexes dot json firestore dot indexes dot json so you can make the indexes from this particular file only all right so it is getting deployed now you want to use javascript or typescript for your cloud functions well typescript is much better so i'll be going for the typescript and if you want the eslint for the errors let's open that up also i'll hit yes fine it's done install all the dependencies yes definitely so it's going to install all the dependencies and it's going to get ready this is an optional thing if you want to skip that part you can skip that part if you don't want to use the firestore firebase functions any any any, any other thing you can skip that part all right even if you don't run firebase in it still it's going to work pretty nicely for you because for authentication and other stuff so we'll be using some other package that is mainly the at angular slash fire that's what we are going to use and basically the agenda of showing these things is that that the new firebase sdk of version 9 which is launched maybe last month i suppose yeah so it's pretty new and i'll show you how to work with the authentication part out there a little bit so you can have a clear-cut idea how to work with that exactly all right and if you want in depth then you will get everything into my course because out there also i'll be upgrading a lot many stuffs all right so that is done now it's time to give the file name for our storage so storag dot rules hit enter and everything is done now you will see out here let me show you up we have the firebase rc file we have the firebase.json file dot indexes dot json file 
Firebase.rules file. All this is available out here. All right. And apart from that, we have the functions folder too, which will create all the things that we need for our backend purpose. So if you want some functionality to, to be done in the backend, you can simply have it in the index.ts file or you can create other files also and then do some integration out here and you can work simply out there. And after doing that up, you can simply deploy that up, use that particular URL in your particular project, Ionic project. So that is how it works. I won't go in depth of the functions just to show you up. I have done that part. So with that being done, we have successfully implemented all the things that is needed for our Firebase project. And if you still want to integrate the configuration for Firebase, you might have forgot, then you can simply go to the project settings. And in here, if you just scroll down for this application, well, this is the thing, this is the configuration that you can use, all right, and place it out there. So that's how also you can do that up. So with this, we have successfully integrated our Firebase into our application. Now, in the next class, we will see how to work with the authentication part. All right. All right. You have seen now how we have set up the Firebase for our Ionic project. And we are good to go with the authentication part to work with the Firebase. So in the next lecture, I'm going to show how to work with the authentication of Firebase in an Ionic project. And after working with that part, we will start our Uber Eats application UI design, which I have already told you in the previous lecture. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel yet if you haven't done that up. And if you have done so much, then stay tuned to the channel because lot many good content is going to come up pretty soon. So with that being said, I'll wrap up this lecture out here. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.